My plane just touched down in my favorite city in the entire world. I'm here in Guatemala City. I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Latin America. And today I'm going to be doing what I can to show you a little bit of Guatemala. I have one afternoon here before I've got to get back to Nicaragua. So I'm going to take you around and show you a little bit about getting into the city right after the bump. All right, I'm on a very tight schedule, very short time this afternoon while I still have light. My plane just touched down. I just came in from Belize. I'm heading back to Nicaragua after a few days away. I'm here at Aurora Airport, which is in the middle of the city. So I want to show this. This is the airport right over here. This is where you come out, you come up the hill. This is where I come to come get an Uber. I know I talk about this a little bit from time to time, and I want to show because if you're coming in, if you're like me, you want to get an Uber, you can't get it in the airport and you can't get it on the circle out front. So you have to walk a little ways. So I'm gonna show you guys where I go so you know what to do. So you're not like, well, he said to go a little ways away, but I don't know where to go. I got you. We're gonna show you how to do this. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna flip. Is this tree in the way? I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna take you for just a, a two minute walk and show you where you need to go so you know exactly what to do to make Guatemala e City that much easier for coming into. All right, there we have, this is where I was just standing, I didn't move. And uh, there's the airport. We're gonna turn around, this is the way we're walking. Now this rotunda, this circle here, very identifiable, you can't miss it. Sorry for the wind, it's very windy here in Guatemala City. Gorgeous day, the weather is perfect. We had a perfect week in Belize for the weather, it was fantastic. And now it's amazing here in Guatemala. Watch out for this sidewalk. I have no idea what's happened here. It's like the curb got shoved up into the sidewalk. It's a bit crazy. So you can't get an Uber on this circle. It's just too busy for obvious reasons, but it's tempting to try to do it too close. So don't try to do it there. See this uh, Mercado de Artisans, keep going that way. And we're just gonna walk up here a little ways. This is the runway on the right that we're walking past. There's a wall right here, but that's going to go away in a minute. It's actually a viewing area. So it's kind of popular for people to stop by and watch the planes. See, we got one taken off right there. So this is quite a lovely spot and this is quite secure. I would not be worried along here. Right now it's daytime which is perfect for, for filming, but I come here late at night. And of course, if you're a single female traveler, I don't know if I would stand anywhere in the dark all on my own, uh, but it's really a pretty safe area in, in the relative sense. So coming along here, they even have little observation holes from time to time, specifically meant for putting cameras through to uh, film the plane. So I'll just show you the airport. This is Aurora that I just landed at. And it is seriously in the middle of the city. It is so handy. So this area right about here, where you've got these big trees, this is the perfect spot to stop and pull out your phone, call your Uber, and they'll be able to stop right here on this road, up a little ways from the circle. No problem, people stop along here all the time. So it is not a big deal. And we're gonna do that. And we're gonna try to get an Uber right now to our hotel. All right, I got a little bit of a wait for my Uber, which is normal out here in Guatemala. Normally, especially when I'm near the airport, it's difficult to find a driver, so it often takes a little bit. They cancel quite a bit. Well, I have one that says he's gonna be here and he hasn't canceled in the normal cancellation time, but it does say it's gonna be 14 minutes, so I've got a little bit of time to wait, but that's fine. It's gorgeous weather. I got a lot of sun. Unfortunately, the sun's gonna get low, so I don't know how much time we're gonna get to film on the streets, but at least I get to do a little bit of the filming uh, intro and stuff and talk to you guys about what's going on. <clears throat> so hopefully we can uh, just head out from the hotel and uh, get straight out to walk in once we get there. Uh, Cause it's only a few minutes away once, uh, once the driver gets here. So I uh, just flew in from Belize, had uh, just the most gorgeous weather the whole time we've been out in Belize uh, this week. It's been fantastic. Meeting this morning went extremely well, couldn't be better. And uh, had a really nice breakfast uh, and, and a beautiful day at the airport. I mean the airport, right. But got a lot of traffic here. I had a, uh, a really nice flight. 
Uh, beautiful takeoff from Belize. Got great shots of the water, great shots of Belize City and, and some of that area. And managed to film a bit of Guatemala City as we were coming in as well. Uh, it's not very often that I get a chance to actually film from airplanes. I normally sit on the aisle and often, you know, planes are full, but the flight to between Belize City and Guatemala City often has a lot of spare space on it. So I was actually able to film out the window a little bit and it was just such a gorgeous day. Normally I'm flying at night, so flying in in bright sun was really a nice change of pace. So I, I was really appreciative of that. So I'm just gonna be here in Guatemala City for one night. I have this whole afternoon, which is nice. I actually get a little bit of time, get into the hotel, do a little bit, go get dinner, relax, and then I got to be up a little bit on the early side in the morning, catching, I think I got to be at the airport at 8, flight at 10, uh, arriving at noon in Managua, and uh, going to be then catching the bus straight out to Leon as quickly as I can, because tomorrow is my daughter Liesel's 16th birthday, so we're going to be hanging out, and she wants to spend the day at the coffee shop, just doing family time there, so that is the plan for tomorrow. So I'm just racing to get back to that. For those who've been watching my show for a while, you'll remember that exactly one year ago for her 15th birthday, I was racing back from Bolivia and we had some major logistical hurdles with flights and buses and stuff uh, coming in from Costa Rica. So something about my daughter's birthday is just travel time. Uh, so we're gonna wait for the Uber to get here and we're gonna take you out to a surprise hotel uh, that some of you may recognize and uh, hopefully, hopefully get to show you a little bit of Guatemala City. We are right in front of the airport here and heading along. That's the, actually the airport wall on the right. We're heading north into the city, and this is a path that I have walked a lot whenever I've been in Guatemala. Whenever I talk about walking out to the hotel or walking from the airport to anywhere, this is where I'm talking about. Uh, and this is actually a pretty easy area to walk. We didn't really skip anything there. We're gonna be coming up on the beautiful old aqueduct system of the city. You're gonna see this a few times during the video, so pay attention. It is so cool. This is like the maintenance area, some industrial area just north of the airport, but we're basically still coming along the airport. On the left is a whole bunch of the municipal services, like the zoo, some museums, some pretty cool stuff. Not a lot of residential in this particular area. The other side of the airport has quite a bit. Uh, so we're gonna be coming around here and really soon, as soon as traffic allows, we'll be coming up on the aqueduct, which seems to separate kind of the newer part of the city and the airport and stuff from the more traditional downtown. We're gonna be getting there uh, pretty quickly. And uh, I'm really thankful my Uber is like, yeah, stick a camera out the window, let's go. And so I managed to get quite a bit. There's the aqueduct, it is so cool. What a great like piece to have in your city. And we're gonna go along it a little bit. It just looks so neat. And you can tell like where we've been, very airport, museums, other side of this, there's this big road that we're coming onto, and uh, loads of restaurants and car dealerships and stores and more normal things on the other side. So we're gonna be zipping about three miles through the city, uh, I believe. Uh, we're heading to uh, my hotel, and I could walk this, but I do have tendonitis. And in this, if you look at the shadow, you can actually see me holding the GoPro just a little bit. Now, this, I filmed this, these people walking here on this sidewalk, this is where if you're coming from the airport, you'll actually walk up there, uh, unless you decide you need to cross this main road, then you're gonna need to find a crosswalk, or trust me, it's worth walking down and finding a crossover, uh, even if it takes you a ways out of the, your way. It is not a road you want to run across. You can see how many lanes there are and how busy it is. It is busy in the middle of the night, so just be prepared for that, that you're going to want to walk way down. I think we'll see it uh, on this drive, but you can see there's a nice sidewalk up elevated there to walk down. Now at night, it does get pretty dark. I don't know if I would do that alone at night for most of you. I have with my luggage, like it's fine, but there's more of the aqueduct. How cool. Um, but I'm not going to recommend that that be something that you do uh, if you're alone, but if you're with people or whatever. Uh, I, I, I don't find it scary um, at all. This is a very good part of the city. You can see the aqueduct goes on and on and on, like it's quite large. And there's the walkover, right? So you would need to come down this far and uh, go up and walk over the highway uh, to get to the other side. But you can see this is one, two, three, four, five. So 10 lanes wide uh, of highway through this area. And there's some spots where it goes down to uh, underground. So it just gets, it's very difficult uh, to try to get around this. So if you're coming to and from the airport, this giant highway does kind of get in your way and make it a little bit complicated, but I love this city. It's such a beautiful city to drive around, and we're gonna walk around it in a little bit. We're gonna show you some more of it, 
I'm always uh, happy. And then this is, you know, the first time that I've actually managed to film driving in Guate, uh, as Guatemala City is, is generally known. Uh, so this is a very different view of the city than we have done in the past. I've done several episodes, mostly in 2022, where I walk the city pretty heavily. And I wish my foot was feeling better because I'd love to do some of that. Now, I pulled the camera in. The driver was like, ah, this is not the best spot to have your camera out because we're going really slow and there's a lot of people out in the market easy for someone to walk up from behind and just kind of grab it no danger just you know there's always the risk to the camera i've never had to worry about that i've never been anywhere where i thought that was going to happen like nicaragua guatemala doesn't matter uh but people are very wary of it and it does happen but uh not not too often something that you're gonna have to worry about you see a lot of people just shopping and, and stuff as they're walking to and from work i was arriving a little bit late in the afternoon so by the time i was out of the airport this isn't exactly rush hour but people are starting to get out of work and and head home a little bit our weather in guatemala city was fantastic it was so cool you can see people in jackets and jeans everywhere it is definitely on the cool side it's the land of eternal spring so you don't expect it to ever be warm uh but this was uh i would say pushing chilly uh, just a little bit. I wish I had warmer clothes where I was there, while I was there, but uh, there's really nothing I can do. Um, it, when you're traveling as much as I was, I didn't. I, no way I was going to have more stuff in my luggage, just not practical in any way whatsoever. You can see the chicken buses there. Guatemala remains famous for their brightly colored chicken buses. Uh, in Nicaragua, we're phasing them out heavily, so you still see them, of course, but you see fewer and fewer of them all the time. Uh, here we're heading back on the same road, but it's so wide you have to do these big turnarounds uh, to get going in the other direction. Uh, but in Guatemala, the chicken buses are much more brightly colored, and they're still investing in them. They're still rolling them out, so you see a lot of them uh, all the time and around the cities. Here in Nicaragua, we use them between cities. In Guatemala, they use them inside uh, the different cities. So they use them for very different purposes uh, between, the, between the countries. Here we do run into a bit of traffic. There you can see the Christmas tree. I didn't realize I had gotten it or I, I forgot that I got it. Huge Christmas tree uh, in the middle of the city. And it was all lit up when I first arrived because I, I this is my second trip to Guatemala this week. And uh, it was just so cool to see. It was really nicely done. Uh, and uh, I wish I could get it at night all lit up. I don't have a good camera for that night. Definitely hard to come out just to grab a picture of the Christmas tree uh, as we're <laughs> as, as I have very limited time in, in Guatemala City. Uh, all right, heading along. We're going to go a little bit more into a residential area uh, very soon. And there you have a nice little park on the right. And a lot of people out walking. It's it, one of the good signs of a of a nice city is that you really do have a lot of people out walking around. And it, you'll notice there are people literally everywhere, crossing the street, in the barriers, on the, the sidewalks, in the park on the left. That's a pretty good sized park right there. Uh, crossing the streets, like people are out. Now, of course, this is Latin America, so you expect a lot of people to be outside and walking around. That's, that's normal. It's part of the culture. But Guatemala City really does encourage a lot of people uh, to be outside and to be on foot and just use uh, pedestrian systems to get around. Now, part of that is the traffic is terrible, uh, which you'll see throughout the video that uh, there just is not enough road space and parking space for all of the cars. And there's such a big population that there are a lot of people always moving around. And so traffic is always really bad in Guatemala City. And you always have to allow extra time to get anywhere longer than you'd think. You'd be like, ah, it's only two miles. How long could that take? I'll give my Uber 10 minutes to get me there, 12 minutes. You know, that'll be fine. In reality, you probably want to allow a lot more like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. The, uh, the speed that you can travel through the city in a car is just far less than you would imagine. Uh, but on foot, you can get around really, really well. And there is public transportation. But I don't know what the, the real answer is for, for Guatemala City. I don't know if they need to find some way to increase public transportation, something to discourage cars in the city. Uh, already the traffic's so bad, it's got to discourage quite a few as it is. But it's quite dramatic how much it impacts the city. I would say if there's one thing that's a really obvious negative of Guatemala City, it is how difficult it is to drive around. Perhaps when the electric automated uh, taxi type systems start making their way in, maybe that will cause a reduction in cars and, and help alleviate the really rough congestion of the city. But other than that, the city really is just 
beautiful and and so easy to deal with and and has so many resources in a tight space and so few tourists which is great guatemala does get a fair amount of tourist traffic but gets extremely few in the capital some obviously but this is a city that manages to remain very very much a livable city with a neighborhoods designed around the people who actually live there and, and such it's it's great that's a burger king on the left that cool structure and uh, we're coming up on my hotel here we're going to be parking on the left very soon that's the avia mall which i did not realize at the time that i was filming this on the left that we're going to pull into and uh, we got a little hotel you may recognize there on the right so with that i'm going to take you to a walking tour around the city a lot of christmas decorations are up here in town absolutely beautiful over here and this is the Antigua Inn Hotel, which some of you who have been with the show for a long time may recognize from our 2022 episodes. So we're gonna be heading in there and we have this beautiful uh, food area. Like everything down the street is just loaded with food. So this is a great place to be. I'm very excited to be back here for one night. We live some of our 2022 uh, adventures let's head on in and see if we can get any filming done in this city before time is up all right guys i just checked into my hotel at the antigua which is where valentina and yvonne and i stayed in 2022 for our guatemala city adventures and filming that we did back then i am heading out to do a little bit of a walk it's late so i can't do a lot of walking but that's okay because i have tendonitis i think anyway and uh don't want to push my foot too hard but i do want to find some dinner so i am off in search of something that looks amazing and there is no end of amazing food and shopping and activities here in guatemala city here we're in zone 10 zona 10 and uh really as we go down the street there's so many restaurants everywhere in this area it's fantastic so i'm just gonna head north i know there's a ton of stuff behind me but uh, that was a crosswalk that that guy just ran a red light and almost hit me. So I'm just looking at all the great places and these beautiful Christmas lights. This is so nice. But uh, I'm trying to find something new because I stayed in this area previously. Now I know it's been a while so I could go eat at the same places. But we don't want to eat at the same places we want to explore. So that's what we're doing. So I am off for a walk. But you've seen enough of me. Let's flip this camera around. All right, here we go. Yeah, these decorations are nice. So as I say all the time, this is my favorite city in the world. And we're here in one of my favorite zones. If I was to live in Guatemala City, it'd be hard pressed not to live in Zona de Ace. It is just so nice. It has so much to offer. It's such a safe area. So beautiful. Loads of restaurants, loads of apartments. I can't believe I still have not managed to get my kids here. I think they would just absolutely love it. They're such a big city fanatics. And they're very interested in potentially living here when they're older. That, uh... They really need to come up and check it out. Got a Land Rover dealer over on the left. Restaurants on the right. This is one place that I thought looked interesting. It's a big Italian restaurant on the right. But I can get Italian back in Nicaragua, so probably not what I want to do, although it does sound fantastic. I'm walking north, in case you're wondering. We did walk some of this. I don't know if we filmed it or not uh, back in 2022. I did see a listing over here for some restaurants that looked interesting, so I'm keeping my eye open in case I'm walking past them. It's very hard to tell. There's so many things hidden everywhere.
place here called Porcino Pollo that's definitely closed. A lot of things kind of look closed. I'm here on a Tuesday. There's a Carl's Jr. here. I don't remember those being here last time, but we've got a lot of them in Nicaragua. It probably was here. I probably just don't remember. This place on the right looks kind of interesting. But uh, that's a that's a pretty nice Carl's Jr. You got to got to admit. Wow, check that out. That is that's a serious Carl's Jr. And then this place on the right has such a American diner vibe. But I think that's a local place. All right, the place I was looking for, I didn't find. I'm going to check a map and see what I did wrong. Okay, the place I'm looking for says it's inside the mall, so that's cool. I'm going to head this way, get a little bit of walking in, and show you guys this beautiful city. He has ears on his helmet. And uh, I'm just going to do some exploring, and then I'm going to work my way back to get some food. This place seriously looks good. I'm really tempted. Whoa, that looks great. I'm really tempted to eat at this place. Chiltepe and Chilaquil. Oh, I was kind of had a hankering for that. My gosh, I may have been just tempted to go. Well, if I don't find, okay. If I don't find the place I was looking for, I'm definitely coming back to that place. That just looks too good. Look at this cute little plaza. Now, one problem here in Guate is traffic. There is so many cars and the streets are not designed for it. Figuring out public transportation, eliminating cars, which is a really tall order, is a big deal for, for Guatemala. It is, a, it is a major problem. You can take public transportation everywhere here. That's not a problem. You got lots and lots of options. You got buses and taxis and Ubers and, and you can walk so many places, but there are still just so many people in such a small area. There's a Taco Bell ad, how cool. Ah, Korean fine dining over there. Ooh. I don't know if I can say that I've ever done Korean fine dining. The restaurant game in Guatemala is extreme. Legendary kimbab. Best kimbab in Latam. That's a claim. Holy cow. We're the best in like 700 million people. I mean, it looks like a nice place. All these streets are just so cute. Beautiful apartment buildings everywhere. It's amazing walking these streets. It's been two years since I walked this particular part of town. I was here recently, but not over here. And uh, boy, it just brings me right back. I feel like I was just, just over here. Uh, check out these beautiful pillars on the left. Hope you guys can see them. I'm going to turn also and show you just these beautiful, got a plaza here, great buildings. I told Valentina I was landing here and she's like, you're in the greatest city on earth. I'm like, I know, I love it here. If it wasn't for the cars, it'd be perfect. Perfect weather. It's also walkable. Thing is, you just don't need the cars 90% of the time. Now I am, this is rush hour you're looking at, right? It's just about five o'clock. So you're getting an extreme view, but it's important to know that it is like this. That is a business school over there. Best I can tell, my eyes are not what they used to be. My gosh. It is gridlock. But for us walkers, I zip right through. Ta-da! It has been a wonderful day. This is a great, great way to finish off a hectic but really good week. Tons of work, tons of travel. And for my final day, 
getting to relaxingly walk around my favorite city and go hunting for amazing food. I mean, what more can you ask for? I do wish it was just a little bit earlier so we'd have better light because we're not going to have sunlight for very long. Guatemala City does have the sun go down early. Tall buildings and mountain ranges surrounding the city. So you don't get that long lingering sunset that you get a lot of places. But it does help keep it cool. We're up here in the mountains. So the weather is always cool. LA Law number 20 looks pretty amazing over there. <laughs> sidewalk is a bit uneven. Normally the sidewalks in Guatemala are pretty good. This is a little bit, little bit uneven. All right, this is the, we came here, I don't, I'm sure I filmed it. So we're, we're kind of, this is the street that I started off on. This place that we're facing across the intersection, this is like a mall, but just of food. It's absolutely fantastic. I don't think any of the places are technically local. Uh, they're all chains, but like, often regional chains. I'm gonna go ahead and cross here since since the road's gridlocked. And, uh, but so this place on the right, it's pretty amazing because it's all like really nice high-end chains, like international chains, not like American chains. And they've got some really good ones in there and the whole venue is just so beautiful. And you can walk in. Oh, look at this cute French bulldog. You little Frenchie. He's so cute. And uh, oh, they got it all decorated for Christmas. That's so nice. Um, and you go in and you just you can just walk around and you got literally like 20 restaurants that are all really nice and all in one building. So you can just kind of wander around to be like looking at menus and stuff. And so if you're if you're going out with with friends or whatever and you know no one knows what you're gonna want. It's like, oh, just meet there and then uh, walk around and see what people wanna do. It is the Fontambello is the name of the place. So this is actually the other edge of it. So all of that is part of this structure. So there's an underground parking garage there. If you're in Guatemala City, I don't know if I would come to it as like the place to go, but if you live here, it's fantastic. Look how beautiful this place is. Wow. This is El Patio. I was racing out of the airport and racing to get my Uber so we could get over here and take the camera out and do a little walk. Been looking forward to this all day. Oh, we got some construction over here. Oh, check that out. New high rise being built. Coolness. Here's what it is. The Via 21. We got a little plaza over here and uh, not much of a sidewalk on this side. So I'm going to cross over once the traffic comes to a stop and head up. I could walk up this side, but I'm not as skinny as she is, uh, but I can cross now. So 
There's no traffic. That plaza looks really nice. I am a little bit tempted to hunt down a great veggie burger, but I've had several burgers the last few days. I've been taking advantage of being in Belize where they do good veggie burgers. But I need something a little bit, a little bit different today if I can help it. I feel like we got a little bit more light on this block. Welcome to Smartville, it says. <laughs> oh, it's a high school. <laughs> That's funny. This is that new high rise being built right there. You can live here. Viva aquí, Casalini. And this is a Vida. Or a Vida. And they're pronounced the same. I feel like we've shown this before, but it's been so long. It's hard to know which streets I've walked and which ones I've recorded. down this street so we're going in a pretty tight area on this particular walk but my watch just figured out I'm out walking so I'll let it know why yes I am walking thank you watch so many beautiful streets all right we got a bit of traffic here just to give it a moment to clear I could make it before that truck if he wasn't so slow. Okay, here we go. We're good. No problema. All right, Casa de Ace on the corner. I don't know what that is. Looks cute. It's probably a shop. So I want to point out, because people did ask me about places that are accessible, these are accessibility markers on the street for the blind to be able to walk these sidewalks. Guatemala City is very accessible, with the obvious exception of the terrible sidewalk that I showed you. I love this apartment building on the right. Such a cute design. No idea what the inside's like, but the outside's are really cool. Ah, that French Bulldog lives there. Aha! Well, that's encouraging. I could have my dogs here. Oh, I'm making note of that. Well, that apartment building has some cute little outdoor seating spaces. That's cool. I didn't want to film people's butts and record my voice. It's weird. So they're working our way to where I think I need to go. These people are not happy, apparently. Well then, all right, I'm not going to have to record myself trying to get across this. Relatively easy. Okay, we came past that place. Continuing on, heading west. Ah, uh, this is Pecorino. This place is huge. It just goes on and on and on. Disco Cafe Bar. So this place wraps way around. It's so large but it has a little spot carved out for some other buildings or other businesses in the front. That is a big, big place. I 
that building is so cool. Okay, we're back at the car dealership. We're heading back up this way. And supposedly, the place I'm looking for is somewhere on the right. And if I can't find it, I'm going to that interesting other place I stumbled on. And this is all Pecorino as well. All of this that we were walking by. It's like half the block. sidewalk kind of deteriorates there all right now this is kind of the area I can't tell if this is am I supposed to go in that door is that just a door you go in I mean it kind of looks like that but it kind of doesn't I'm gonna stop and check the map but hmm feeling Feeling unsure. Okay, so I figured out a bunch of the restaurants that are listed that I couldn't find are in the Avia Mall, which I didn't realize was a mall, even though we stayed across the street from it. This place is pretty incredible, but I didn't want to film inside. So, I just gotta tell you, it's like multiple floors, super fancy, mostly food, some high-end shopping, really interesting, worth checking out. Uh, you've got a lot of food options in there, just not the one that I was looking for. Maybe it was in there and, and disappeared at some point. So I'm gonna go back to that interesting place that we found. But this is, this right across from the Antigua doesn't look like a mall and it doesn't announce itself. This is definitely a high-end place. It's not meant for tourists. So you may not need to know that it's there, but if you're staying in the area, which I really recommend, um, and the Antigua is great, you have this place right behind me, which is a big food mall. You've got the one that I showed you, the Fontambello, and then you have a Via here, plus all the restaurants on the streets. Like, this is an incredible area uh, for food. Like, there's just endless. Now, it's all big places. It's all a little bit more expensive, but it's incredible. I'm going to see what I can do for light right by these... Uh... Oh, do I look really cool? Yeah. That's, that's good lighting right there. All right, we're gonna head on to that interesting restaurant and go check that out. All right, so this is called The Palace and I can only describe it as like an extremely upscale Denny's. That's kind of what I got for you. It is really nice. I was super impressed uh, by eating there. The food was fantastic. The menu was huge. The setting is like very high end, very fancy, uh, but it's also got pictures of the food on the windows and a wide variety of things. So in like a Denny's is kind of a, a commercialized diner experience in the United States. I can only describe the palace as kind of an extremely upscale, similar thing. I got a uh, broccoli cheddar uh, bread bowl. They have simple things like grilled cheese. They have really fancy things like salmon and steak, and it really runs the gamut, but it was excellent. Service was great. Price was not bad at all. Uh, lots of baked goods. They have their own bakery. Uh, it's a neat place. If you need a variety of things in one place, check it out. All right, thanks for joining me. I'm Scott Allen Miller. If you get a moment, like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. If you have the chance, watch another video. Watch our stuff from Guatemala from several years ago. Uh, anything you can do, share with a friend, tell someone about the show. Even just letting videos run in the background when you're not watching, it makes a difference. It really does. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, we got the links above and down in the description to buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, we have membership as well, which just is a support thing. So you can $5 per month to help make all the stuff we do here possible. And uh, as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.